So today, what we're going to talk about is, first of all, some of the basics of lean transformation. What are we talking about? When I say lean transformation, what do I mean? So some key principles around lean transformation are understanding the customer and what they want. Like we said on our first slide, the customer is the next process. How do we provide for them according to that ideal state? On demand, one by one, exactly what they want when they want it in the, in the best quality. Second, understanding what is value added versus non-value added. People do a lot of work. Some of the case studies that we'll talk about in a moment really show a lot of the work that people do and they work hard. You have to applaud the amount of work they do. Unfortunately, as we can see, a great deal of it, a great deal of it is completely unnecessary. And it's not because of bad people, it's because of process. So we'll look at case studies in a moment like that. And then the other key principle is to recognize and eliminate waste. Those of you who have been around any type of uh, Lean or Lean Six Sigma or whatever have probably heard about the seven wastes. We won't get into the details about that tonight, but we, one detail we will get into is the eighth waste. So you have your seven wastes, but the eighth waste is the one I really like to focus on in an effective lean tran transformation, and that is the waste of ideas and intellectual capital. Your people have the best solutions to your problems. As we start showing that changing behavior leads to good business results and satisfied, engaged employees, then we're getting people convinced to make a snowball effect and lead to, over a period of time, that culture change that people are really wanting. So the, one of the key behaviors to always remember in a lean transformation or any type of problem solving, focus on the problem and not the person. Good processes make for good results. I've seen the kind of paralysis that can occur when there's a lot of change going on in an organization and uh, individuals don't feel engaged, don't feel empowered or that they have the tools and mainly, as, as Mark pointed out, they'll feel that they have the support from, from the group above them, from the managers. Um, we like to think of three specific areas and that is the management of self. Uh, throughout uh, a change initiative as well as going beyond self. I cannot tell you how many um, times you need, and all of you in this room know that, you need those individuals to go beyond self and help other people be successful. So that's a lot of what we teach. And accountability. The idea of staying accountable for some reason is foreign to some people. The idea that they would more proactively report in on what they're doing and update managers and so forth um, is critical and especially during lean. This is the frame we work we also teach in our MBA program, trying to make our students uh, much more proactive. We do a lot of work around creativity because we want to give the permission to be creative. We actually do some uh, creativity exercises. Um, the idea is let's get people back to a point where they feel safe to be creative. The emotional intelligence. One thing I like to say when I'm teaching emotional intelligence is that it's not that complicated. Here in the business school, we have really begun to look at our MBA program we look at GMAT, but we look at emotional intelligence too. And we know that sometimes the emotional intelligence is a much better predictor of success in the business world than the GMAT score. We know that high performance teams understand some of the dysfunctions that can occur. So we want to make sure, and the project that Mark and I are working on right now, every person that, that has gone through five dysfunctions of a team, see, they see themselves they know that trust is very important and um, they know that uh, connectivity with each other is very important all the way up the ladder so we teach them what are the aspects of the high performance uh, team and then we do a lot of team building with them as well and I say team building in terms of um, exercises so that they begin to work together and in the case of the project Mark and I are working on those team building exercises are always germane to the project at hand and what the company is looking to do I'm talking about soft skills, and Mark, of course, is talking about lean. 
but it's a very powerful combination when you put it together. Yes, we do talk a lot about the skills that are necessary to make your team enabled to improve and make them, uh, make them make the contributions. But part of that is teaching them to be able to measure and understand the data themselves. There are simple tools to do that and they're extremely effective. If you need Lean Transformation, we are having offering a program here. And uh, starting in June, it's a very interactive workshop followed up with 90 days of coaching to pick and go through a project in your, in your particular organization. It's open enrollment. And uh, at the end of it, you're expected to lead a real life project in your organization and come up with results like this, learn how to display it, and learn how to convince your superiors. I don't think any of you have any superiors though. You're just a great group of people. But learn how to convince them that this is something that needs to be done.